Hey everyone, this is Stefan James from Project Life Mastery, and today I'm excited to introduce you guys to Jason Masick. He's a building biology consultant, an electromagnetic radiation specialist. And Jason's someone I've actually hired to come over to my new apartment that Tatiana and I recently bought to check for EMF radiation and look for opportunities of what we can do to improve our home. And this is something that a lot of people, they're not aware of. Um, they don't realize how EMFs can affect their health their physical well-being. And so I thought I'd do a video with Jason and just have you share your story, uh, bring some awareness to things that people might not be aware of is affecting their health, and more importantly, offer some suggestions on what they can do about it. So thanks for taking the time being here. No problem. Do you mind uh, sharing with people a little bit about your story and, and how you got into this field and yeah. maybe even a little bit just about EMFs and just kind of shed some light on that? Yeah. Well, um, I got into this field because I got sick myself. Um, I was a home automation specialist networking um, homes and commercial buildings and building out automation and touch screens and everything uh, coming out of walls and things like that. And what ended up happening was, is I ended up getting a Lyme bacteria. Um, so I had Lyme disease and I just crashed. Um, and I didn't know what was wrong. I didn't know I had Lyme at the time, but I did know that I felt worse in these homes. Right. In these places, I felt worse. And when I left, I felt better. Mm. Um, and I didn't know the correlation. So I traveled. I discovered building biology in Germany right. um, and found the school in the U.S. And then I just dove straight into that. And along the way, I dealt with my Lyme. I dealt with co-infections. Mm. I dealt with mental health. And I got better. Right. So those of you who are electrically sensitive or have any sort of autoimmune issue, there is a way to help. Electromagnetic fields are considered in building biology like a, a large slice of the pie to getting healthy. Um, we still need to do all the things like exercise, getting outside, mm -hmm. um, breathing clean air, and just overall having a holistic, healthy view of your life. Mm -hmm. So EMF isn't sort of the, the main uh, culprit, right. um, especially for when I was sick. Um, but once I removed that, um, it gave me space to get healthy again. So some of the things, the easy things mm. that we do is um, in your home, we want to make sure that the fields from electricity are nice and low. Mm. And we want to make sure that our wireless technology is either some folks have it non-existent um, and some folks have it lower. Mm. Um, and I can help because of my background, um, I can really help people people's lifestyle with technology and wireless technology. So a lot of people that come to you, um, they, I guess, already have a sense of awareness about how EMFs are affecting them, but what are some of the common symptoms that someone maybe watching might relate to, like um, in terms of you know maybe low energy, headaches? What are some of the common things that people feel that EMFs can affect physically within them? Yeah, you got it. So it's the, the initial ones are things like uh, anxiety that seems to right. just come out of nowhere. Right. You know, you're just doing something and you're, you're feeling anxious. Yeah. Um, right. Headaches, uh, small things like dry eyes. Mm. Um, many folks now are just getting sort of a tingling feeling. And one of the most common ones, uh, especially in youth, they don't even recognize it, but it's sort of this a strange sort of tinnitus. Oh, okay. Uh, a ringing um, that's occurring as well. Yeah. So those are kind of the sort of initial symptoms and what we know from a lot of the science is that it all kind of stems from oxidative stress right so the emf uh, penetrates our body we absorb some of it some of it reflects um, and what it's doing with to our system is it's kind of telling us that we're supposed to be stressed out and running and exercising mm -hmm. but we're not we're relaxing mm -hmm. uh, so that can kind of confuse our biology mm -hmm. Got it. And one thing that one of the reasons why I, you know, brought Jason here is I've had some awareness about this for a while now. And I'm sure you guys might have heard, you know, about 5G and, you know, some of this stuff that gets talked about. But um, one thing that's fascinating that you do is that you can measure it. And you've come over, you brought all your gear and you can come to people's homes and actually measure the effects from your, your, your Wi-Fi router and, you know, um, you know, the electricity in your home and all these things. And there's certain parts of your home that you really want to make sure um, is not affecting you, especially maybe where you sleep or where you work. 
And so there's a lot of value in bringing awareness to it and just looking at things that you can do. So one thing we're going to do right now is we're going to head over to the bedroom. That's one of the best opportunities to look at and things that you can prove just just your overall health and well-being. Uh, so Jason's going to bring out some of his gear and actually do some measurements and show you guys some of the effects that some of these devices can have in your well-being. So let's head on over. So right now we're in our bedroom. Um, you've got a few devices here. Do you want to maybe explain what you're measuring for and sure. what you're doing here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, these two guys are measuring radio frequency. Um, this is a bigger antenna, so bigger the frequency. That's actually the real distance of the waveforms. And here, this one's measuring smaller waveforms. And it's measuring the density in a band of frequencies. Okay. So it's not like specific frequency what is happening, it's a band. Um, this guy here is measuring electricity. Okay. Um, they're doing two very different worlds. Uh, this does magnetic fields um, and electric fields, which is current and voltage. Okay. Um, over here, radio frequency, we're talking Bluetooth, cell phone, Wi-Fi. I see. Yeah. Okay, got it. So right now, like, what is it picking up and what are the common things that you see in someone's bedroom? Right. So in the bedroom, we want to make it safe. You got to feel safe in here. Uh, building biology, we call it a sleep sanctuary. Uh, that means not only EMFs are gone or low, but everything in the room is actually making you feel relaxed. Right. Um, and the air is clean in here and we have materials in here that are healthy and all that sort of stuff. Okay. But back to EMF, one of the most common things we have is the cell phone mm -hmm. on the cell phone charger. This affects all of these meters. Um, so you can hear the ticking on here. And that's the sort of, hey, how you doing? It's kind of closer to Bluetooth is what we're hearing right now. But then when you lift up the phone, Ooh. Maybe you have to lift it up. <laughs> Put your face on there. There you go. There's the pops. So it pops and whistles and tries to connect to the tower. Um, and that's what's happening. So even when you're sleeping and you roll over because you want to see what time it is, when you do that, there's a huge EMF density pulse that is connecting to the Wi-Fi or the tower and you're absorbing that. So um, that's one thing to know about the cell phone. So what's the best practice then? Obviously, it's just if I put this in airplane mode, yes. will it reduce it frequently, you know, a lot. A but huge even amount. then, will it yeah. still affect me if it's on airplane mode? No. So the RF won't affect you on airplane mode. But there's another EMF called light. Okay. Our, our light is an EMF. And the light from the phone will also uh, affect you at night because we're used to no light right. at night. And there's this thing called melatonin. Yeah. Um, and with light, a bright light, will reduce our melatonin. And it'll affect our sleep. Yeah. Um, the next EMF on the charger is there's a lot of voltage and current that is in this area with electricity. And this meter is picking up a really high level of voltage. There's lights, there's numbers. And I go through that. That's how I help people. I get you to, I, I get numbers from all this equipment and we go over what those mean. The best thing, ideally, is cell phone is out of the room. Um, and you can even leave it on in that case if you need to. Nothing is charging by your bedside table. We don't have any electricity uh, close to us at all. Um, and uh, let's get battery powered clock radios, right. red. <laughs> Old you know, school. like the old yeah. school red clock radios. Um, and we need to work on that. And I totally understand a lot of people use their phones, you know, for meditation purposes and things like that. So I go over all that kind of stuff and we go through your lifestyle and, you know, help decide what is make, giving you joy and happy and lowering your EMFs at the same time. Got it. That makes sense. And, you know, you brought up just the light. I think that's an important thing. And one thing I've learned about is, even like I got a TV here and, you know, sometimes you watch it in the evening time yeah. or sometimes there's like flashing lights on, you know, the sound bar and, you know, flashing lights just in other devices. But those are affecting your brain's ability to release melatonin to go into a deep sleep. And so one thing that I've done is I wear like the blue blocking glasses yeah. and but also just trying to like put tape over like, yeah. you know, certain things that are flashing lights oh, or whatever, because 
it's going to affect the quality of your sleep. And, and, and over time, that's going to make a huge difference. Yeah. And um, you mind kind of commenting on that? Because sometimes for some people, they might notice an immediate effect, but there's also others that it's a cumulative effect over maybe several years of being exposed to the EMFs that can have an effect. We know that light does for sure, because that's a, yeah. our biology is completely linked with the circadian rhythm of the earth and where you live. Um, so right, so the longer term we expose ourselves to uh, strong EMFs, um, certain frequencies, types of EMFs, types of light um, that slowly has a, a health effect on us that then years down the road, you know, you're just, you're just um, fatigued, it's common. Um, and people find, of course, that when they are out of the city, um, they start getting more energy and they can't figure out why that is. Yeah, got it. And what about, I know a common thing for some people is um, the wiring that might, you know, be just in their walls in the yeah. building they live in or the house they live in, um, or maybe they live near some sort of radio tower or, you know, something like that, which can have an effect, or maybe they have, you know, their Wi-Fi router in their bedroom or, you know, close to them, or, you know, can you maybe talk about those things and, I guess sticking to the bedroom, what are things that people can do if those things are maybe affecting them? And um, yeah, what, what can they do about that? So with electricity, the best thing is to just turn it off. Okay. And the way we turn it off is we go back to a breaker panel okay. uh, where you have those big breakers in your house. Some people still have fuses and we turn them off in the bedroom. That being said, you do want a professional figuring that out for you um, because certain breakers in the home, not necessarily in apartments, but in the home, there's different circuits moving around and we wanna make sure we turn off the ones that work the best. So when you have a piece of equipment that's giving you a number and a sound, you can quantifiably say, this is lowering your EMF. Um, so we do that, we turn off breakers, we turn off things. The next level is shielding. So we can put shielding around the space that captures the EMF. Um, or it reflects it. That's kind of like, like a, you can get like a canopy for yeah. your bed or yeah. um, I think I've seen like you can, you know, if you have a duvet cover, you can even put like a certain material that shields it too. Yeah, yeah. The concern with any shielding is we're adding metal okay. in the space. So we really want to make sure that that is the right choice to do because right. sometimes it can make things worse. Um, so you have a lot of people purchasing earthing type of devices and, you know, they're covering themselves in a, in a, in a foil sleeping bag. Um, and there's multiple reasons why that could be bad. One, the metal can break off and you start breathing it in. Right. <laughs> so that's super bad. Uh, two is you become more attractive to electricity and EMF. Right. So yes, some of it's not getting to you, but now you're like the best thing in the world for yeah. voltage, right. uh, another thing called dirty electricity, um, you're attractive to it. Um, so that can make you more sick. So you need to understand or have someone come in to chat with you about, okay, I'm concerned about EMF. How do I get rid of it? Um, can I shield? How can I shield safely? Lots of steps like that. In the, um, that's more in the electrical world. In the high frequency, radio frequency stuff, yeah try not to have any wireless tech in your bedroom. Yeah. Um, there's lots of ways to hardwire devices. Now we can hardwire Android phones and iPads and iPhones right to the wall. So yeah, so the bed canopies are used to reflect radio frequency stuff from, let's say you're in an apartment and there's a bunch of Wi-Fi's around. You wanna shield that. Um, let's say there's a cell tower near outside, you wanna shield for that. That's what the bed canopies are really great for. Now, if you use a bed canopy, you want to make sure that the electricity in the bedroom is under control as well, because again, that bed canopy has metal in it, and so it'll attract right. all that electricity. So yeah. there's steps that are involved. Um, yeah, so we don't want any wireless tech in the bedroom that's going that you have to absorb while you're sleeping, because how we talked before, it's sort of, it's making your body feel like it needs to exercise while you're sleeping. Got it. Another one I want to touch on is just how your mattress, your blankets, pillows, all of that, the chemicals that those are made with can affect your health as well. Do you maybe want to touch on that? Yeah, uh, VOCs, volatile organic compounds. It's kind of like saying bacteria. So there's good VOCs and bad VOCs. The bad VOCs, of course, are from industry. 
you know, benzene, formaldehyde, uh, toluene, you know, it just goes on and on and on. And um, they're really bad for us. <laughs> uh, and especially in foam mattresses and around our bed. So um, with the foam mattress, we want to avoid polyurethane, um, which is any mattress that has the word poly in it. Um, and then we try to stick with latex. Uh, now in the world of latex, now there's a, a variance in the world of latex too. Yeah. Um, so the, the cleaner, the healthier the mattress, the likelier, the cleaner, the healthier the sleep you're going to get. Uh, for example, I had a client um, and he wanted a full panel of chemicals that were in his bedroom. So that takes, that's a big lab test. Right. Um, and yeah, we found a ton of toluene um, just around his bed. And that was all that same POC was found in his blood yeah. through blood wow. tests. Wow. Um, so yeah, so he got rid of, rid of that mattress. Yeah, and, and that's one thing that I've been learning a lot about. Um, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Essentia mattresses, yep. but that was one that's you know, organic, natural memory foam. And just trying to stick with organic as much as I can with my blankets and my pillows and pillowcases and towels, all of that. Your clothes, yes, those are another thing too. So all these things can make a huge, huge difference. Yeah, if I wear uh, fleece too long, I get um, kind of like hot and I couldn't figure it out for the longest time. So yeah, but when I switch to wool or cotton, I don't get that. Uh, of course, fleece is awesome to wear skiing and yeah, things like yeah. that, but um, for the daily stuff, I try, to, I try to wear cotton. Okay, so that's the bedroom. How about we new, now move to another part of the home and you can kind of show a little bit more. The panel. So we're in an office desk. It could be even a bedroom and a lot of people have concerns about the panel. The, if everything is wired correctly, there's no wiring errors, which I'll get into in a little bit. Um, the safe distance from this thing is usually like four to six feet okay. and you're fine. Yeah. Um, as soon as you start getting wiring errors in the home, which I'm not gonna go too deep into it, but it just means that the electricity is finding different paths back here, which it's not supposed to take. Okay. Um, and then I help with an electrician to find them yeah. and fix them. And does that affect just this area or the whole home? It could affect the whole home. Okay. But this area will be even bigger. Right. Um, just because it's where everything hangs out. Um, so we repair things like that. That's an EMF that we repair electromagnetic fields. Um, also the concerns here is how we were talking in the bedroom to turn all EMFs off. We flip, we find which one is the bedroom. It's usually one of these, which is a GFI. Uh, we flip it off and you go to bed. Now you can also automate that. Okay. You can get little clickers to, oh, to cool, automate cool. it. So like at different times you would turn it off throughout the day, like in, yeah. when you're sleeping, you don't need it. Yeah. Okay. Sleeping. Um, if it's a room that you just want to have relaxed, you can just knock the electricity out. Um, so that's always great, um, with the meters, you know, I'm going to come in and it'll start ticking at me. It'll give me numbers and we can see that when we get really close, the numbers get high and that makes sense because all the wires are kind of separated inside. And as we move further and further away, it drops correctly. And the, the thing with EMF is it's exponential. So the, the best possible thing to get away from an EMF is distance. Mm -hmm. um, because the further distance it's exponential, it's called the inverse square law. Mm -hmm. So the further away the, the field just drops significantly. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then how about the modem and router? Do yeah, you want to maybe five. head over there? Everybody's let's, uh, let's see if we can find it in your house. So what I do usually is I'll put on these two guys and um, turn on the sound and then we go and try to find the Wi-Fi. So right now it is picking it up yes. here, but it's more low, obviously, the closer you get to it. The closer so I get, the louder and the yeah. bigger the numbers I'm going to get, okay. for sure. Let's go this way. So I'm pointing this way, I'm not hearing anything. Yeah, and louder we get. Yeah. It's in here. So here it is. <laughs> so um, with regard to Wi-Fi, 
There's now different types of Wi-Fi um, to match the new 5G technology that's happening outside. There's a sister technology called Wi-Fi 6, and it's a mesh technology, um, and it's essentially like having mini cell towers inside your house because 5G technology has a really hard time getting into buildings. Right. So they need people to have a Wi-Fi technology to keep that sort of wireless, seamless system working. Got it. So this is going to be a baby's room for us. And obviously, you know, a baby's crib is going to be in here and sleeping here. So we don't yeah. want that to affect it. So yeah. what would you suggest someone with, do in this case? With children, uh, EMF is especially concerning because they're, they're, they're growing so fast and their DNA, all that written information is helping them grow. And we know now uh, electromagnetic fields over a long period of time, they can have an effect on how that growth happens. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so we don't want any wireless in here. Uh, we even want to be careful with things like um, cameras. Um, uh, there's even certain pr uh, providers here in Vancouver that have cameras that have warnings on the bottom of them that says, this can cause cancer if you have it too close to you. Right. Um, uh, so we want to be careful with wireless tech. Uh, you want to have a meter and make sure that there's nothing that is on um, that you didn't even know had an EMF attached to it. A uh, client had a grinder in their kitchen, yeah. a brand new grinder, and it had a huge radio frequency signal and they had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so same thing with kids' toys and all that type of stuff. And what are your thoughts just with all the wearable tech now? You know, I've got my cell phone in my pocket. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people have got, you know, the Apple Watch. Yeah. Um, I've got this you know, this ring, but the it can, ring. yeah, the aura ring, yeah. it can, it does have airplane mode, which yeah. is great that some devices have now too, but yeah. uh, obviously wearable tech and Bluetooth headphones, all those things are being more common. Yeah. Um, has that something that you've noticed been affecting? And especially now, I guess with 5G, is that a threat for, uh, or at least a concern for a lot of people? Um, it's a concern for people that know about it, for sure. Um, with wearable tech, the issue is, is so close to our bodies. And with EMF and even wireless tech, the closer to our body it is, there's something called a near field. And that near field is super chaotic and it's more biologically active than if you were just simply, you know, two feet away from the tech, right? It's just a different world. In fact, my meters can't even accurately measure when we're in the near field. Right. Um, so, Yes, the answer is yes. There is a there is a health concern, but again, it's over time. Yeah. So if you're someone uh, like me, I have to carry myself into my pocket sometimes. Um, do I carry it in there for a long time? No, no. Uh, it comes out of my pocket whenever I'm sitting. Um, it uh, stays, you know, at least uh, a foot, two feet away from me um, when I'm working. Um, and then, yeah, you just can throw it in airplane mode if you, if you have a concern. Um, the, I do have a personal concern with like Bluetooth mm -hmm. headphones near the brain because we do know uh, for a fact that the glucose, so how your brain processes sugar, mm -hmm. changes significantly when you have wireless tech near your brain. Right. Is how harmful is that? I don't know, but it is happening. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the type of things you, you, you can use the Bluetooth headphones. Should you use them for eight hours a day on conference calls? I would think twice right. about that. Can you use it for a five minute call? Sure. Yeah. Right. The cool thing about us is, uh, as, as biological beings is we're really good at getting healthy again, if we're given the right environment. Right. Right. It's the same thing. You wouldn't um, try to like fix a flower if it's dying, you're going to try to fix the environment it's in to make it healthy again. Right. So you got to think of things like that. Got it. It makes yeah. sense. Okay. Uh, do you want to move over to microwave? Yeah. Let's chat about the microwave. Mind sharing with people a little bit about the microwave? Yeah. The infamous microwave. So this has been like a decades, you know, argument, conversation about microwaves. Yes. They produce a huge electromagnetic field. Um, they're actually the same frequency range as Bluetooth, um, cordless phones. It's all the same frequency range, except huge amounts of power. Right. Uh, and the distance, the safe distance from a microwave when it's on from the front is about six meters. 
Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so fire it on just, way too close just so right you now. can hear what it sounds okay. like. Okay. Let's put it on for 10 seconds. And we'll see how well you're. That's what a microwave sounds like. Okay. <laughs> so when you're behind the microwave, it's a fully shield metal box. You're, you're pretty much okay. It's just the, the door. Right. Now, here's the thing with microwaves. Yes, horrible EMF, but it's only on for a few seconds. Okay. Like I said before, the, our bodies can deal with EMFs. Certain people have a really hard time, especially if their nervous system has been like totally whacked out with something else then they sort of react really quickly. But average healthy person, you're in an EMF, you're there for a while, you leave. Um, so I'm, I'm actually okay with microwaves. Again, I'm okay with Bluetooth. I just would like to educate the public and say, hey, there's not nothing happening. There is something happening. Um, so understand that and, and change your time and your distance with it accordingly. Yeah. Well, I think it's really important that we're bringing awareness to this. Just little things that most people, they live their lives and they're just oblivious to it. And, you know, everyone's different. Some people might be more, okay. <laughs> Microwave's angry. Yeah. Some people might be more sensitive to these things than others. Uh, for others, it just might take time over many, many years yeah. of having this exposure. You know, it is something that can affect your health. And so, um, you obviously can apply some of these tips and suggestions that Jason was sharing with you guys today. Uh, I recommend that you do so. Uh, you guys can look more into this as well. Or if you want to have a specialist like Jason come over to your home, he can come over, measure your place and look for little, you know, different opportunities that um, might be unique to your home of what you can do to improve uh, your household. So do you mind sharing with people a little bit about the service that you provide and, and you know, you're here in Vancouver, Canada. Uh, there might be someone based on where you live, but do you mind sharing a little bit about yourself and maybe share your website? Yeah, yeah. Uh, company's name is Benchmark EMF Solutions. Um, you can find me at benchmarkemfsolutions.com. Um, based in Vancouver, I do travel. Uh, I've done a lot of properties in Pemberton, Whistler, um, out in Aldergrove, Abbotsford, um, Sunshine Coast is quite easy to get to. Uh, so uh, I have a big, big, big plant. Um, yeah. And if you're building a house too, I know you work with people that are building their home to make sure that it is set up the right way. Yeah, yeah. I work with architects and engineers. Um, I, I have access to EMF specialized engineers. Um, so we can actually design the home to be totally EMF free. Uh, and there's different steps involved in that. So we need to be the easiest and the most inexpensive is right at the beginning before you've even yeah. started your build. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, we do a lot of real estate transactions um, and then concerned homeowners. Love it. Love it. Well, thank you so much, man, for your time. I appreciate just coming on my channel, sharing with people and bringing some uh, awareness to this. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. I'm going to link to Jason's website and his information below this video so you guys can find, find out more. Reach out to him if you have questions or if you're interested in working with him. But thank you again. Thank you guys. We'll see you guys again soon in another video. Take care.